Uh, hey guys, so um, now we're on the part two of the chapter five. Uh, sorry, now we're on the part two of the chapter five series, which is um, uh, dealing with Newton's second law, which, uh, as you know, is um, let me write it up here force is equal to mass times acceleration, or acceleration is equal to force over mass, right? So that's basically Newton's second law. And so now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into friction because that comes in, um, that comes into play a lot when we're talking about force because friction is a force. Friction is a force. And remember we defined it before in chapter 4 as a force between two objects touching. Between touching objects, right? Now... Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper and say, well, why is it a force? Why does it require, why, why does it have force? So let's think of two things rubbing together. Let's take like sandpaper, perfect example of friction, sandpaper, and, and plastic, okay? So we have this piece of sandpaper here, and it's kind of jagged, right? It's very jagged. That's why I'm drawing it, drawing it kind of jagged, okay? Then we have this kind of nice piece of plastic. If they start rubbing together up and down, the plastic... The little imperfections in the plastic have to overcome the imperfections on the on the sandpaper. They have to either break away the chip, break away the extra chip, or they have to hump over it. They have to kind of move over it. They have to break it off or move over it, and vice versa. So that's why sandpaper is so effective because it actually breaks away at this at this plastic. It kind of makes it. It'll make it if it's kind of imperfect. It'll make it very flat and smooth because it requires force to break off the pieces of plastic and that's why friction is a force and now they're kind of, they also kind of talk about um, the kinds of materials and it does it does matter so the example that they give is um, steel and concrete S steel or sorry not steel like rubber touching concrete um, provides much more friction than steel versus steel okay here's steel and steel so not very much friction here but a lot of friction here. So that's why they say rubber dividers, or they put concrete dividers instead of metal, because the um, concrete will provide more friction against the rubber tires. And then um, they talk about how it's, it's not restricted to solids. Friction is not restricted to solids, meaning that you still experience friction in water and air and fluids. So gas, gas and, and um, liquids are fluids because, as they say here, they flow. And so... They give an example. Try running a 100-meter dash in water. It's very hard because there's a lot of friction in the water, right? And then air resistance. We keep mentioning air resistance. We don't often use it, but we keep mentioning it. That's technically, that could be said like air friction, okay? That's why when you see space shuttles, you know, zooming in at 90 degrees coming down into the atmosphere, you see they oftentimes, they catch on fire and they get this fiery shell on the outside. That's because there's so much friction between the atmosphere and their, their um, metal exterior that it actually gets so hot it catches on fire, which I think is very, very cool. So that's diving a little bit deeper into friction. But now we're going to move on to something that I find just... This is probably my favorite part of all of mechanics, which is the first 10 chapters of your book or so, something like that. First 16, I think. This is my favorite part of mechanics by far, and it's pressure, okay? Very easy concept, very easy concept, okay? And so now, basically, pressure, pressure is how, it's not really a force. It's directly proportional to force. P is directly proportional to F. But it's basically, it's the amount of force per unit area, okay? So when we want to talk about pressure, we always want to talk about force per unit area, which would be force over A, or area. And so that's the equation we want to look at. And so I always think of pressure as a force. That's just how the light goes off in my head, but it's not. It's, it's more of how force is spread out over an area. So they give a very nice example of, or let me, so first, uh, P stands for uh, not pressure. It stands for um, Pascals, um, which is the unit for pressure. It's kind of misleading. But um, so Pascals can be defined as force per unit area, right, and area. Okay, so that means, so let's give a little example. If I have, um, they give this example, if I have a standing up book and a book lying flat, which one provides more pressure on the table? 
So they're both the same book. So that, let's say that they both produce um, 5 newtons of force on the table because that's how much they weigh, 5 newtons. Well, technically, um, well, let's look at it, actually. Let's say that um, the area of the book touching right here is 3 inches, uh, 3 cubic inches, or, you know, let's go with 10, uh, 10 cubic inches. So we have um, P is equal to 5 over 10 for this book. And then here, it, let's say the, the pressure is, I mean, the, the area of touching is 20, okay? And then we have P is equal to 5 over 20, okay? Now, here, it's 1 half. P is 1 half, 1 half Pascal. Now, P here is 1 fourth, right? As you can see, the pressure that this book exerts on the table is less than the pressure that this book exerts on the table, and that's basic pressure. And I love the example they gave with um, your the author, Paul Hewitt, um, smashing the bed of nails on his companion, Paul Robinson. And the reason that works is because the nails spread out. The nails have such a large area across his body that they spread out the pressure so much that not a single nail has, a, has enough force to puncture his skin, which is so cool because the area is so big, right? The area is so large that whatever you divide it by, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a small number. The Pascals are going to be a small number. So that's, that's very fascinating. And um, I would love to keep going in this video. It is at about six and a half minutes. But I feel that the next concept I'm going to talk about, which is free fall, um, we dive a little bit deeper into free fall. I feel that that deserves a video um, to itself. And I don't want to um, have to cut this one short while explaining free fall. So I think a part three will be in order um, to finish up with 5.6 and 5.7. And then um, after that, we'll just work out some homework problems, and we'll be done with five. We'll be moving on to six, and that felt relatively fast to me. So I'll see you guys in the next video.